It's Wednesday and it's time for this week's class with me, Chris. Hello, good to see everybody today. What's happening in your life? Do you have anything exciting? Does anybody have a test coming up soon? If you're new to this channel, very warm welcome to you. And if you're a returning student, hello, to, it's great to have you back. What are we doing today? Um, I have a couple of things that I want to talk to you about today. We've got um, obviously IELTS preparation and we're going to do some reading practice as well as some writing practice. So you should see on the screen we're going to do some reading exercises just there and we're going to do some writing practice as well. I hope that's going to be useful for you. I know a lot of you struggle with writing and <clears throat> we're going to talk about writing academic task one. We're going to look at a line graph if I remember. I haven't looked, but we're going to, I think it's a line graph and it's about subjects at school. Um, obviously, it's uh, one of those things that you have to prepare every single time. You've got to know the difference between all the types of graphs, charts, tables, floor plans, everything. And I say all the time, you have to be prepared. Let's see who's in the chat today. If we have any members in the chat, hello to Kamini, who is a member. You can see anybody with a green name, that means that they are a member of the channel. Hello to Mohammed, good to see you there. Um, hello to Kamini from India, good to have you. Um, Ayola from Nigeria, wonderful to see you there Ayola. And Jula Tep, um, I'm not going to guess where you're from, but it's great to have you in the chat today. Oprite, Oprite from Nigeria as well. Two Nigerians in the chat today, which is wonderful. And Toledo Clothing, you are Maria, you are from Vietnam, Fam fabulous. So good to have so many of you in the chat. And if you're not already a member, you are welcome to become a member. It's great to have you. Hello to people from Taiwan, from Nepal, from Timor List, um, everywhere in the world, from Sri Lanka. We've got people from everywhere. Good to have you all. First question for you, what score do you need in the IELTS test? Maybe um, you need it for academic purposes, going to university. You might want to do it for your job, furthering your job. Maybe your job asks for it. Or maybe you want to migrate. What score do you need in the test? Pop your um, kind of answers in the chat box and we'll see who is going to be... Who needs the highest score? And we'll see what all what the average score is for, for you guys. Lots of you are saying 7, 7.5s, 8, 6.5s. Most of the time um, we need, most people are going to come with a, a band 7 or 6.5 or 7, usually for academic purposes. We will hopefully get you to that level, particularly for writing. That's the hard part um, later in today's class. But for the first part, I want to look at some reading practice. And you will know that the IELTS, <clears throat> the IELTS Daily website has some reading practice. We post lots of reading um, samples on our uh, Instagram page and on our Facebook page. They're kind of daily samples and they're bite-sized chunks, a little bit smaller than the real test, but it keeps you practicing every day. We think it's really important. That's why we called our company IELTS Daily, because we think that having a little bit of practice every day will really help you go a long way. Shall we do some reading practice together? What we're going to do is have it on the screen there, and you are going to choose the answers. There's a, a short text, and there are, in this case, two questions. So what you would normally do, and you have to watch my reading strategy video. If you haven't already seen it, come to the YouTube channel, watch the reading strategy. It will help you score nine. I just saw somebody in the chat said that they need nine in reading. So if you do need nine, come and watch our strategy. We're going to have a look at this one today. And I'm going to give you three minutes to choose the answer for question one and for question two. So you've got three minutes to answer question one and question two while I have some tea.
pop your answers in the chat if you want. Uh, put your question number in there and then we will um, discuss them together. I can see lots of you putting your answers in the chat, which is fantastic. Good on you all and keep contributing. Okay, that's probably long enough. Now, the strategy, obviously this is a shorter text, but it gets you into the, the, the feeling of how, how this works. You are required to read just short parts of the passage and come back and have a look at the questions. In the real test, you're gonna have maybe 13 or 14 questions, and they're probably gonna split into two or three sections. You have to go to each section and you've got to try all the questions at the beginning of each section. Watch the, watch the reading strategy video because it really helps you. I'll talk about some of the common tips and the tricks of how the test is trying to um, play with you and trying to trick you, and we will discuss the answers to see whether you got the right um, answer. Let's have a look together. So the first thing that I notice is that this is um, a question which asks you to do no more than two words. That's the first thing that you need to notice. No more than two words right at the bottom there. All right. And because there are some spaces, that means that this is going to be a fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Now, I want to make this really clear to you. In the test, do not change any of the words from the text. Do not try to be clever. Do not try to be smart. You cannot manipulate words from the text and you cannot split words up. So if two words are together in the text, it will be very unlikely. In fact, they will never be split up in the answer. Now, in this case, it says up to two words, no more than two words. So you may have to use one word or you may have to use two words. You should never, and I'll point this out to you, you should never repeat the word which is before the gap. So in this case, we've got the word before the gap, which is the. You should never repeat the word here. It's never necessary to do that. You should also never repeat the word which is after. So for example, the word for, because it's already there. You should only take words exactly as you see them in the um, text. Now, what things are we looking for? We're looking for clues. The, f the first thing that you need to do is just read the first couple of lines, two paragraphs, and then we'll see how we get on. The spice trade has spanned the world for thousands of years, but the global pandemic almost brought it to a standstill. As the world went into lockdown, the complex networks that produce, transport, process and package spices were thrown into disarray. So the first thing is that I noticed that it says the global pandemic. Now, what you, um, <clears throat> the trick here is that you're gonna be looking for words in the text and in the question as signposts. You know, if you go on holiday and you get lost in a city, you're often looking for signposts. Now, these signposts are not going to take you directly to the answer always. They might be close to the answer, but they're not always going to be directly before or after the answer. But they will be in a section where the answer is contained. 
So the first thing that I think is that I've seen global pandemic in the question and I've seen it in the text. Therefore, it is highly likely that the answer is going to be somewhere around this. By the way, if you learn anything from today's class, I would be super grateful if you can give this video a like and a thumbs up. I hope you enjoy coming to these classes and if you do, please give the video a like. Don't forget. Let's have a look at what I mean when I say looking for signposts and for clues. So the first thing is that I notice that we've got global pandemic here and we've got global pandemic at the top. So it's really likely that the answer is going to be somewhere in here. The second thing that I want to bring to your attention is that the IELTS reading test never expects you to understand difficult words. Yeah, so there may be some language that you find in academic training modules or in the general training reading where you don't know the word. They could be high level vocabulary. The IELTS reading test is not expecting you to understand those words. They actually include them a little bit to put you off or to at least make you think about the text as a whole and you have to push through and read past any words that you don't understand because getting to the answer doesn't necessarily require you to understand difficult words. And that's really important for you to mention. Sometimes the answer in the space or the short answer will be a difficult word, but you don't need to know the meaning of that word. You need to know the words around it and you need to get the general idea. But the meaning of the answer is not necessary. And very often the IELTS test will use a technical word as an answer, but they won't use it as part of the question. I hope that makes sense. We'll have a look at the question here. So um, it says, the spice trade has spanned the world for thousands of years but the global pandemic almost brought it to a standstill. Okay, so we've used, we've got the word standstill here. Now, if you don't know the word standstill, um, it's pretty easy to, to um, guess. So you would say that it was staying still and it's standing, so it's not moving. So it's had a severe impact, okay? And therefore, therefore, you would ask yourself, what has had a severe impact? Or so what has had the severe impact on it? And sometimes the IELTS reading will carefully place words at the beginning of the text, but in the answer, the space is at the end of the sentence and vice versa. Maybe the answer is at the beginning uh, and the space is at the end and vice versa. So just, just watch out for that because you'll see that in this case, it's actually talking about the spice trade. And notice another clue here that we've got the word the up here and we've got the word the here. Now, this will not always be a main clue. It won't always be like this because maybe it will be a and an that might be helping you but it won't always, but it is a useful clue for you to think about. And so in this case, it is talking about the spice trade. And the answer to this one, the first one, would be the spice trade. So you would put in the space spice trade. That is the answer for question one. And I would always make a note of the answer here when you, if you're doing the paper-based test, I would put a circle and I would put the number one next to the answer. And I know a lot of you sit in the test and you tend to underline almost everything that you read. This, re this strategy really doesn't work for me. I like to be sure that I found the answer. So really the only thing that I highlight is the answer when I find it. I don't think it's very helpful if you're underlining almost every line or if you're trying to underline keywords. That's not really a helpful tool for me, but it may work for you. Now, the second one is um, 
if we oh so we keep we keep reading and we just read the second uh, the third paragraph which is this one here who would harvest the, the crops who would run the processing plants how could spices be taken to ports so that they could be sent on to buyers abroad and who would check the goods for safety it says it was difficult to imagine a world uh, who would continue to run this intricate network in spite of the impact blank for these products increased significantly so I don't find anything in there that talks about for these products because I don't know necessarily which products they're talking about and they and if I read a little bit more it said for, as people use spices for a variety of domestic reasons a variety of domestic reasons so what we're trying to do here is show that we're looking for this domestic reason something that's going to help us there okay I noticed some people in the chat are saying it's quite easy, it's easy. When you do short text like this, it is easy. But what we're doing in this class is teaching the technique and looking for the signposts and looking for the words which are going to help you. Okay, we have to start small and work higher because in the real test, 20 minutes feels like not very long. But I want to teach you a technique which will make you feel comfortable and actually finish after 16 or 17 minutes and it gives you a little bit of time to check. So we'll look, we're going to continue reading from at the same time. At the same time, global demand for spices uh, was skyrocketing. Consumers stocked their cupboards for a long stint of home cooking and spices such as cinnamon, cumin and black pepper suddenly became essential ingredients. Those thought to have medicinal benefits such as turmeric and ginger also saw increased demand as consumers sought to protect their health. Okay, now um, there are obviously two things that you're talking about here um, we've got products and domestic reasons so we've got um, domestic reasons would be medicinal benefits protect their health but also home cooking that's the same as domestic reasons and products are all the things that are um, all of these cinnamon cumin black pepper so they they are giving you clues and therefore the answer for this is one of two options. Please note that one of two options is important here. And we have something called the main word, and then we have additional words. So if you choose the main word only, you have the right, you, you get a mark. If you choose the additional word and the main word, you get a mark. If you just choose the additional word, you won't get a mark. Let's show you what I mean. So the answer to this is actually global demand. But the main word is actually demand because you could say demand for these products increased significantly because you have the word demand as well here without global demand. Do you see? So the options that you could have would be global demand or demand. If you just said global, that wouldn't make sense. So very often there is an additional word that you can use. You don't have to use it, but it has to make sense. And you can't use more than two words. Does anybody have any questions about that reading? That was fairly easy, but um, good practice to start. Let's see if anybody wants to come with um, a particular question and we'll see if, if they want to ask something. Let's uh, get you up here. Anybody have any um, questions for now? I don't think there's any questions that I can see particularly. So what I'll do is give you another one to do. So we'll take another test and see how another question and see how you get on. OK, give me a second and I'll bring the next one up. And 
this isn't working just one second give me technology uh, here we go alrighty there is your second question see whether you can do this one this is a true false or not given As always, if you like this class, please give it a thumbs up and a like. Good luck with this question. Just jump in here, true, false, not given are really hard for many people. So if this is hard for you, don't panic. I'm here to support you and I'm here to help you. Take a little bit more time and have a go. It's always nice to have a supportive teacher, right? This one is really interesting because I'm looking at the chat and I'm noticing that so many of you have different answers. And this really highlights to me how difficult it can be for people to do these true, false, not given. So it's really worth thinking. And this is su super, super, super important. True. The text agrees with the statement. It's basically the same false it has to contradict the statement yeah so the dog is white i saw a black dog they're not the same therefore it is false okay the dog was wearing a collar we don't know what color the dog is Therefore, it's not given. True agrees, it's the same. False, it has to contradict, it has to be the opposite. And not given, it's not possible to say whether the answer is there. I'll just give you an extra 30, 30 seconds for this one.
Thank you, Saqib. If anybody saw Saqib's message in the chat, Saqib said that he or she got a band 8.5 in the test. Many congratulations to you, Saqib. Okie doke. Let me see whether you guys have got the right answer. We will do some um, checking now. All right. Let's... Um, Let's actually have a look at some of your question one answers and we'll see what the dis difference is between some of your responses. If we open up your responses here and you'll notice that it's like um, Dr. Fatema said false and Edna said not given. Asta said false. Tay Tracy said false. Black Snow said false. And Kamini said true. Kamini's one of our members. They said true. Jason said false. Um, first thing that I should notice, Jason, please check your spelling. Um, it's really important that you do that. Um, Anna Maria says, these are sometimes a bit tricky for non-native speaking, especially. I absolutely agree. Um, it's very, very, very difficult. Let's go with um, the text. Let me move your chat out of the way and we'll do the text together. Remember, the strategy is always the same. We read a small section and then we look at the uh, questions. Let's have a go. I haven't done this one for a long time, so I don't remember the answer. We'll see how we get on. We're going to start from the first, just the first paragraph. The 18th century saw the emergence of the Industrial Revolution, the great age of steam, canals and factories that changed the face of the British economy. OK, let's have a look at the question. The first question. The first question says, before 1900, the process of production was well developed. Now, do you see anything that talks about production, the, any process? I don't see anything. It says um, the 18th century saw the emergence, the great age of steam. Maybe the process of production would be the Industrial Revolution before 1800. So what they're trying to do there is say the 18th century, which is before before 1900, the process of production was well developed. Does it necessarily say that it's well developed? Okay, we'll have a look. I don't think it, it says anything yet. So I'm not convinced yet. Let's have a look at the next paragraph. I think we all agree. Early 18th century British industries were generally small scale and relatively unsophisticated. So there we go, we've got industries, early 18th century, and we've got the word unsophisticated, small scale and relatively unsophisticated. So for me, that is the opposite it's the opposite of well-developed. They were small and they were unsophisticated. Therefore, the answer for this one is false. Because it, it's the opposite. Okay, let's continue. Most textile production, for example, was centered on small workshops or in homes of spinners. So it wasn't developed. It was in small workshops or in homes. A literal cottage industry that involved thousands of individual manufacturers. Such small scale production was also a feature of most other industries with different regions specialising in different products. Metal production in the Midlands, for example, and coal mining in the North East. Now, the next question says, metal production and coal mining were the first industries to be industrialised. 
So we have the words metal production and we have the words uh, was coal mining, did I see it? Um, coal mining in the northeast. And what we should notice there is that it said specifically that metal production and coal mining were the first. And your job is to find out, does the text actually say this? Does it say it's the first? That's true. Maybe the text said it was the second, which means it's the false. It means it's the false, or it could be the last, which would be false. Or alternatively, there's no way to say what was the first um, option. And in this case, there's nothing in here which says the first industries to be industrialized. So the answer for this one is not given. There's no way for us to say whether it was the first or not the first. Okay, let's continue. New techniques and technologies in agriculture paved the way for change. Increasing amounts of food were produced over the century, ensuring that enough was available to meet the needs of the ever-growing population. A surplus of cheap agricultural labour led to a severe unemployment and rising poverty in many rural areas. As a result, many people left the countryside to find work in towns and cities. So the scene was set for a large-scale labour-intensive factory system. People remained in rural areas due to an increase of job opportunities. Well, this is definitely false because it said there was severe unemployment and people left the countryside. Notice here that they use different words like countryside and rural areas. This would be an example where they have used synonymous language. You should know the word countryside and you should know the word rural areas. So you're looking for these signposts and clues to help you along the way. And this is definitely false because it said there was high unemployment in rural areas and as a result people moved to the cities, to the, to the urban areas to find jobs. Easy, right? Easy, easy, easy. So the answer for this one would definitely be false because it was the opposite. So it should be false, not given, false. Put your hand up if you had those two, those three as the correct answer. Who got those three correct? Let's see who's who's doing well. And we'll go we'll go over here to see who's coming. Uh, oh, sorry, move you. Uh, let's see. We've got False, not given false, well done. Three out of three. Lots of people going, going correct there. Well done to you all. Good job to you all. I like it when you all do well. Making progress and improvement, that's good job. And if you didn't, remember, if you didn't get them all correct, that's not the end of the world. What we're trying to do today is teach you the tips and the tricks and what to look for in the test. So. Again, if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. Shall we do one more? I think we'll do one more. Um, let's open up another one to see how we get on. Okay, we should have a new one there. You've got, this is a fill in the blanks. No more than one word. Your turn, go.
Welcome to anyone who's just joined the channel. Great to have you here. We are doing reading practice. You've got two minutes to answer these three questions. I just want you to pay attention to Zinmar. Go and have a look at Zinmar. Go and check your third answer. Somebody will tell you why this is definitely wrong. Somebody please tell Bogdan, Bogdan here, why did Bogdan get the wrong answer? Okay, it seems like it seems like you guys prefer the sing the fill in the blanks where you have to choose a word. A couple of minor mistakes there. I think one person chose weather balloons and the question asks specifically no more than one word. And this is such a simple mistake. I just want to kind of go ah when you uh, when you make those simple mistakes. And the other one was a couple of spelling mistakes. And I know that you're typing on your phones, or if you're watching this on your phone, or if you're typing on a computer, that doesn't excuse you because in the test you're gonna be under pressure. I really want you to focus on spelling, make sure that they are right. A couple of people were asking in the chat about whether you write in capital letters or not. The, the answer is, I prefer capital letters for both the paper-based test and the computer-delivered test. In the computer-delivered test, it really doesn't matter. It, you can write it in, in small letters, that's fine. It's going to make no difference. But for the paper-based uh, test, please, 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 please always write in capital letters for listening and reading. It helps the people who are marking your test because a lot of you under pressure are going to be writing really fast, lots of um, pressure for you to join up words quickly together and it makes it difficult for people to, to distinguish whether you have the uh, correct spelling or not. So I strongly recommend people doing paper-based tests to write in capital letters. In the writing section, you can write in capital letters in the paper-based test. In the computer delivered test, please don't write in capital letters because that's not um, going to be something that you you're using a computer, so you should you should know when to use their capital letters and punctuation. Right, we will go with this and we're gonna do the answers quite quickly. We may not have time today to do the uh, writing. We'll maybe do that next week. We're gonna do some speaking as well. Let's go with this one. It said, North, uh, we'll go this part here. North American meteorologist from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Hurricanes Research Division have recently improved the success rate in their forecasting of where hurricanes are likely to hit land by an estimated 15 to 30%. 
This increase in accuracy is due to the use of instruments called GPS drop wind sondes, which can probe the atmosphere surrounding a hurricane while it is still out at sea. So it says GPS technology has improved. Now people, I told you about signposts and I noticed a couple of you are using um, are giving me the answer which was forecasting. The idea of it, the reason why it's not forecasting here is because you can't say improve the forecasting of tracking because tracking and forecasting basically they're, they're quite similar but what we're looking for are the signposts here for GPS GPS drop wind sons please notice that and we've also got the instruments and we've got the word technology so the answer here for number one is going to be it has improved the accuracy this increase in accuracy so if you chose accuracy as number one that is the correct answer well done if you chose accuracy as the correct answer let's continue a little bit more the atmospheric characteristics of hurricanes overland are well understood because an investigation is possible with weather balloons containing sophisticated meteorological instruments um, it detects atmospheric changes so we've got the word atmosphere and we've got the word probe that means to detect so the answer for number two is actually going to be at sea over the sea we've got out at sea we've got over the sea so we can use the word sea here that's the answer for number two and historically we've got the word um, weather balloons and we've got the word uh, balloons here when hurricanes are out of reach so historically with sophisticated instruments so we've got sophisticated sophisticated instruments here they're exactly the same as the text but the answer is actually before so we've got the word balloons containing sophisticated instruments so the answer is balloons you cannot choose more than one answer so if you chose weather balloons that would be the incorrect answer was that good did you enjoy that i hope that that helped you i hope that gave you some some useful advice because using these signposts are very 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 important when you're doing your reading because when you read longer text you have to be looking for key key ideas but please follow my reading strategy go and watch the reading video and if you are already not a member, I just saw somebody just become a member. Well done. Well, uh, welcome to them. I don't know who that was. Uh, let's see who that was. Welcome to a new member, which was, um, I have no idea. I think that's in Japanese. Nice to have you in the um, class today. Great to have you. Hello to Bal Bulbal. You can become a member and it's just like, it's so cheap it's one US dollar a month and you have access to all my old live videos so if you want to do a lot of training and you want access to kind of one hour classes where you can sit down and do some practice maybe you're on the train maybe you're going to work one dollar every month just to have access to all those live videos you can sign up on YouTube but unfortunately I'm really sorry. This isn't available in all countries because it's YouTube which prohibits it. But you can maybe use a VPN if you want to access that. I highly recommend coming along and joining, and you get access. I, I tend to uh, interact more with with members in the in the in the class. So, for example, Toledo Clothing said accuracy and C. An investigation got that one wrong. I'm sorry, Toledo. It's uh, what a, a a shame. Anyhow. Um, who wants to, we've got 10 minutes of class remaining, who wants to come in the box over here? Do we want to do some um, speaking practice or ask me some questions? What I'm gonna do is post a link. I haven't said everything up today, but I'm gonna post a link, make sure that you all have it, and then you can join me and you can sign into the, the class. And what we'll do is 
give you the opportunity to ask me some questions. So I'm posting the link now in the chat. I will also pin it to the top of the chat. Um, I will see you in there. Remember, there are a couple of rules. The rules are that you have to, and I'm going to be strict on this, you have to have your um, camera on. You have to have your microphone on. You've got to be in a quiet place. And please have a question about IELTS. Camera on, sound on, microphone on. Be in a quiet place and have a question about IELTS. So let's see if anybody's going to join me. Uh, and we will hopefully get somebody into the box. Let's see. Oh, somebody, people have just arrived. I just need to fix a couple of things because uh, let's see if anybody is here. I'm going to let this person in. Let's see if they are ready. Now, if they can start the video. Okay, I know I just need to fix a couple of things, so they probably won't be able to hear me just yet. Uh, let's see if they are online. Damira, I think. Damira. Uh, I don't think Damira is turning on their stuff yet. Let's see. Uh, microphone and speakers. Here we go. So I should, I'm going to try as a mat. Um, now, let's see here. As a mat, I might add you first. And there you are, as a mat. Hopefully, we can hear you. As a mat, can you, um, can you try and say something? Hello. I'm going to try. As Very loud. Mat. If you can just um, do it on Zoom and turn off the sound for YouTube. As a mat, I might add you. How are you do doing today, as a mat? You can answer me. We can hear you. Oh, we've lost him. We can hear you. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Where are you calling in from? Uh, thank you. I'm from Uzbekistan. Wonderful. And, and what's I, your question? My question is, uh, I was wondering if you could give the strategy for matching information. I always struggle in this uh, type of question. So the reality is, and this is my honest answer, there's actually no difference between matching information. Have you practiced the strategy with reading small sections and going to the to the questions? Have you done my reading video? Uh, oh, yeah, you have you done my reading no. video? No, I didn't watch it. So the most important thing is go and have a watch of my reading video because there is no strategy for a specific thing. So there's no strategy for matching headings. There's no strategy for multiple choice questions. It's just one single strategy that will help you get band nine in reading. Um, you keep muting yourself. There you go. And uh, can you... Uh recommend us do you recommend us to read f questions first or the passage go and watch my video and it tells you exactly how to do the reading strategy wishing you a nice day as a thanks for joining us oh are you still there ah great we've got nguyen one second nguyen uh, let me make sure that you can be heard. Give me a second, Nguyen. We've got Nguyen, I think, from Vietnam. Let me fix this. Nguyen's having trouble with the sound. That's okay. It's um, 
let's have a go. My uh, my zoom is playing up. It's not it's not being helpful for me. Let's see if it's here. Nguyen, Nguyen, Nguyen. There we go, Nguyen. Try again. Hi, Chris. Good to see you, Nguyen. And um, what's your question for us? Um, I have a question that um, uh, almost of the uh, vocabulary in IELTS reading, I can understand, but I can get a higher point. So you, you um, struggle with understanding the general the general idea or you don't struggle? Yeah, um, struggle with the, you know, comprehension. So as I mentioned in today's class, um, one thing that you don't need to do is you don't have to understand all the difficult language. It's really important that you don't worry about understanding everything because most of the time the answer is going to be found within language that you do understand. So don't be put off or don't be distracted by language which is difficult. Have you watched my reading video? Um, uh, I have. You have? Have you watched it? I've got two of them. So make sure you go and watch them again and have a, have a practice. But um, it is yes. a very common problem that people get put off by the hard language. But I want to reassure you that you don't have to worry about that. Thanks for coming along today, Nguyen. Take care. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. And I'm going to go to Michael. Where is Michael? Hello, Michael. Hello. Hello, Good teacher. To nice to see you. Good to see you. And what's your question for us? Um, got a question. I had a comprehension problem like the man before. So, uh, like, I read the next uh, sentence and I forget the the previous sentence, I mm. cannot rem I cannot remember it all. That's a common problem. So one of the things that you have to do is take a small paragraph. You don't a couple of sentences. Try not to focus on understanding every word, because when you try to do that, your brain forgets other things. So try to make sense of the majority of the words but don't focus on understanding every single one. Um, have you watched my reading video? Yes, I, I read it. I, I watch it all, about three out of three every time. Great. And have you um, done some practice since? I've done some of it. Okay, great. What happened to your score? Did it stay the same? Did it go down? Did it go up? Um, it kind of stays the same and um, cannot go up. Okay, so what in today's class, did you do any of the practice we did in today's class? Um, excuse we me? Did a, we, did a, we did three practice uh, reading uh, texts in today's class. Did you do those? Uh, I did two. Okay, and how did you get a lot? How, how did you do today? Um, I did pretty well, like two out of three. Uh, and the next one is uh, three out of three. Great. So obviously you're doing well there. The texts are a little bit shorter. My my recommendation, I've made a few different reading videos. Come and watch them all and do lots of practice. Take examples from the Cambridge books. Try the ones from the Cambridge books. Read short passages and look at the questions. You, I promise the more practice you do, the easier it will become. Um, I have a question. Like, I have one more question. Uh... You say that we should do, we should read paragraph and then read the question immediately. And we yes. should not. Yeah, so, so go and watch my reading strategy video. And I explain everything on how to do that in that video. Okay, thanks. Good. Well, nice to see you, Michael. Take care. Nice to see you. Good. And let's see if anybody, there's a few people that don't have them there cameras on so i'm hoping to get somebody who has their camera on let's see we've got uh this person here who is samuel and let's see if samuel is ready hi samuel okay thanks good you didn't you need to turn off the, the volume in youtube and just do it on zoom could you hear me we can um 
What's your question? Could you hear me? We can hear you. What's your question? Uh, I just want to ask, in your opinion, what is the hardest part of the IELTS examination among the four? What do you think? Well, I find it difficult. Uh, the module that I, ha I find difficult is the writing part, but I could manage it. But I just want to ask you and if you have any tips. Writing is by far the most difficult and it's the area that most people find most difficult to score well. Um, I have lots of tips and I've made lots of videos on writing. So yeah, you have, have to, watched them all. you've watched yeah. them all, the live classes. Yeah. The most important thing is to make sure you understand the band descriptors, to make sure that you understand the question when it's, when it's posed to you. And to make sure, for me, the most important thing is to make sure that you understand task one and don't just focus on task two because a lot of people overlook task one. They think it's easy, but the reality is that task one is really hard. Are you taking general or academic training? Academic. I am, yeah, yeah I'm going to take academic this um, next week. And so good, wish good, me luck. good luck to you. We wish you the very best. I'm sure all the people in class wish you the best of luck. What, yeah. um, what, which type of academic task one, bar graph, line graph, table, pie oh, chart, the, what do you find most easy and what you, do you find most difficult? The most difficult for me is the diagram one. Yeah, the diagram which has like stages and process. So I find it really difficult for me. It's absolutely yeah. difficult. <laughs> so go and have a look at some of the sample answers that IELTS have written and download some of the sample answers that we have on the um, IELTS Daily channel. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Nice, nice to see yeah, you. I really appreciate you making videos. Thank you. Most, most welcome. Thanks, Samuel. I think we've only had, have we only had, um, oh, we had Cesar. Cesar has turned off video. Is Cesar here? I think we've only had boys today, have we? I've, I, I've been choosing girls' names and nobody's had their um, video on. So I'm going to try once more. Um, I'm going to come to this person here, which is Hope. And this might be the last person today. Let's see if. Well, let's see if Aris is available. Hello, Aris. Good to see you. Hello. Nice to see you too. Good. And what's your question for us, Aris? Um, my question is about how can I understand the whole paragraph? Like in the reading test, I couldn't understand uh, all the words, the difficult words in the test. So is there any way that I can improve my reading skills? If you watch today's class, I mentioned that you don't need to understand all the difficult words. There will always be difficult words in IELTS reading, but the IELTS reading test is not testing you on difficult words. It's testing you on the whole paragraph. So you don't need to know those difficult words. Many of the difficult words will be the answer, but they will not form the the journey to the to the answer. They won't be part of the question. So you don't need to know the 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 meaning of those. How did how did you do in today's class? What scores did you get for those? Um I I corrected all of them. You got you got all of them correct? Yes. Good job to you. Yeah. So it seems like Thank you're you. not having too many problems. Um Thanks for coming along, Aris. I have one more person to, to go, and I think this person was already. Um, let's see. Cesar, we had you, but we lost you. What's your question for us? Where are you calling from today, Cesar? I'm calling from Abu Dhabi, UAE. Fabulous. And what's your question? Uh, I don't have a question, but uh, I have a <laughs> compliment. Ah, go ahead. Uh, Flattery will get in. Uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you. In English, we can say flattery will get you everywhere, and that means you can compliment me, and I will be your friend for life. So, what's your what's your compliment? Um, I took the IELTS test, and um, unfortunately, I um, I took the uh, the test, the computer based test, before I watch your um, reading video. So I uh, fortunately I failed my um, uh, the reading uh, section. Um, after I think after two days I saw your 
um, reading um, videos and I tried again through through the test and I managed to get um, 7.5 or 8 through my test. That is incredible, Cesar. And um, what did you get before that? Uh, six. Six. So you went from six to 7.5 or 8 yes. because of the strategy. Well, I'm sure on behalf of all the people in today's class, we want to give you a big round of applause. Good job to you. And the hard work is all down to you. You put the, the hard work in. How did you do in the other sections? Um, on um, listening, I got eight. And reading was six. Writing six and speaking, I got seven. But the second time you got reading seven point, yeah. Uh, no, this test, the 7.5 or eight, that's, those are just trial tests. Aha, uh, the real okay. One. Okay, yeah. so you're going to have to take the real one again. Yes. Ah, oh, what a shame. What a yeah, disaster. You you should have taken the, you should have read the, or watched the video before going. Yes. Yeah. When's, your, when's your next text, test booked for? I haven't for? booked yet. Mm. Yes, I'm trying to get my writing, you know, above seven at least. Okay, good. And originally from the Philippines? Yes. Good. I can tell by your accent. <laughs> Good, good to have you on Cesar and we will see you uh, maybe in a future video. Yep. Take care. So bye bye. Thank you for doing this. Most welcome. Oh, isn't it nice when we get people, all the people today, I'm sorry they were all boys, I wanted some girls to come along. Um, isn't it nice when we get success stories and people feel kind of empowered and they're able to achieve and that's the same that goes for everybody that comes to this class today. The fact that you are here, the fact that you're making the effort to come along, come along every week, practice, practice, practice. Somebody in the chat today said practice makes perfect and they are absolutely true. A little bit of an announcement, news next week, Wednesday, no class. Thursday next week. I'm so sorry, I can't work on Wednesday, but we can have a class next Thursday, same time. So I hope to see everybody there. We might do the reading, uh, the writing class that I, I prepared for today. We spent a little bit longer on reading today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was useful. I'm going to come back to the chat to say goodbye to you all. Thank you to everybody who came along and put their, you know, faces on the camera. It's always nice to see you all. Um, good. Anna says she chickened out. I joined the Zoom when you posted the link, but chickened out. Anna, we are all very disappointed that you didn't come along to the class. Nobody should chicken out. We should all be here to support each other. Who else? Um, good. Let's, um, let's say goodbye to you all. Thank you all for coming. Great to see you. And as always... Keep working hard, keep practicing, and if you did learn something or if you like this video, give the video a like. Take care, enjoy.